Hi guys, welcome to week number 14 and lecture number 13 of Introduction to Structured Programming course. Uh, we are done with our course. Uh, last time we discussed about uh, recursion and we have done several exercises. So as far as the syllabus of the course is concerned, we are done with, with the whole course. It's just that we are left with the revision and final project presentation. So this video is going to be quite brief. I'm not going to make it very long video. I just wanted to quickly tell you which topics you should go through uh, in order to prepare for your final exam and I'm going to quickly show you the sample final exam as well that will give you at least some idea of what you should expect from the final exam. So I'm going to show you uh, some of the questions that are, I mean obviously they are not going to be the same questions that will appear in the final exam but I will at least show you what type of questions you should expect from your final exam, uh, what topics you should study and so on. Um, so I'm going to start that in a while. Before that, I want to talk a little bit about projects. So final projects, your presentation is on 6th of April as uh, as per the schedule. So make sure you have done, uh, completed your project. So this is the schedule I have uh, for your project presentation. So it's on April 6th starting from 6 p.m. This is the first group who's going to present and based on your time window, you should appear for the presentation. Make sure you wait on Blackboard. If I'm not uh, on in the main room of Blackboard, it means that I'm already with uh, some other uh, students in the breakout rooms. We know this. Uh, we have done the same thing in our labs as well, so you should be aware of that. Uh, I will make sure that I put some note for you guys on in the main room so that you guys are aware of what is going on and so on. So, yeah, this is the schedule uh, for your final project presentations. Uh, I, I'm sure you guys are doing great. With your project i can see that some of the students have not submitted their final project yet although the deadline has already passed um i don't know i just want to tell you guys your final project is 20 percent of your total marks so if you are not submitting your final presentation final project it means that you are losing 20 percent of marks please don't do that please don't do that i can see that some of the students have not submitted their project so i am not to show what you are thinking about but you're going to lose 20 marks if you don't submit your project and if you don't uh, appear on your presentation day for the presentation as well so please do not do that uh, do not do that why to miss those 20 percent marks from your course you never know what's going to happen in the final exam right so let's grab all of these marks which are available for us before we finally go into our final exam right so make sure you submit your final project if you have not done it yet uh, i'll give you today's day as well uh, which is 5th of april uh, monday so if you submit by monday end of the day uh, i will still accept your project so please make sure you submit your projects make make sure you appear for your presentations based on this schedule um, otherwise unfortunately you're going to lose those 20 percent marks so make sure you do that and do not miss your presentation so that's for this next thing i want to talk about is what topics are important for your final project uh, for your final exam that you should concentrate on honestly this is a very uh, different type of uh, course so it's very difficult to segregate between different topics because all the topics they are actually related to the previous topic so if you know one of the topic it means that you already know the previous topic already so, but still, I'm going to try my best to give you some, some shot on what to study for your final exam. So, uh, you need to study the operators and so on, our first topic, uh, in fact, our second topic. It's okay if you don't study the first week. Uh, start from second week, uh, we need, you need to understand what control statements are, you need to understand what for loops are, you need to know what functions are, so you need to go through all these things. Uh, then you need to know what arrays and vectors are. I'm sure you already know about them because we have done quite quite, quite a lot of exercises on arrays and vectors uh, and we have done and I'm sure you guys are working on your projects as well that include arrays and vectors. So these are uh, some topics that you need to go through. It's okay if you leave behind strings. It's absolutely fine. Although, I mean, strings, I mean, I, they, there might be some questions that are related to arrays but they are character arrays which means actually strings but if you want to just let go strings i think it's okay uh, you still need to talk uh, you still need to study about pointers very very important concept so i'm going to bring some questions from pointers for sure uh, you can let go uh, classes and structs uh, you can let go uh, file processing and standard template libraries 
but you need to study introduction to recursion so basically uh, you can you have to study week 2 3 4 5 6 7 uh, sorry 8 uh, then week number 10 then week number 13 so these are the thing these are the topics they are very very important for your final exam I'm gonna bring questions from all of these topics uh, but as I said that some of the since this course is based on in a hierarchical way which means that previous topics are actually important for the next topics so it's very difficult to actually segregate them but if if the topics I'm telling you right now if you are good in them you know what they are you have done some good exercises on them you should be okay with the final exam so uh, that's for your uh, final exam topics these are some very very important topics that you should go through and uh, as per the uh, schedule our exam is scheduled on 20th of April uh, don't worry about this time so normally you the stars they all mention this time but don't worry about this time as uh, we are doing this uh, exam thing for the first time we never had any quiz we never had any midterm exam for this course so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open this exam final exam uh, for the whole day of 20th of April so for the whole day of 20th of April starting from the start of 20th of April till the end of the day 20th of April the exam will be available for you you can go on blackboard and take your exam anytime during 20th of April all right anytime all right but please make sure that you have only one try once you start working on the exam you cannot leave it you cannot pause it or resume it later so make sure when you are sitting for the exam you have at least 100 minutes for you one hour and 40 minutes well, I'll, I'll think about it honestly for the final exam for the final for the sample I'm gonna show you it's around uh, for 100 minutes but maybe uh, I will increase the time for the final exam to maybe 2 hours or 2 hours or, and 30 minutes just to give you more time to perform your exam but just to tell you that once you start your final exam you have to make sure that you have enough time you know, at least 2 hours or 2 hours and 15, 50 minutes for you because there are some instructions that you need to read and so on uh, you need to give you yourself that much time before you actually start your exam so as I said that your final exam will be on 20th of April and it will be available for you for the whole day of 20th of April. So you can start your exam anytime you like you know, during that day, but you have only one try. So once you have started your exam, you cannot pause it or resume it later on. You have to finish that exam. Only then uh, it will be completed, right? So make sure you follow all the instructions that are given to you in, in, the, in the exam and I'm going to show you some of, um, in sample exam there are no instructions to be honest, I'm just going to show you some questions just to give you an idea of what type of question you should expect, what is the diff level, level of difficulty and so on. But uh, the instructions will be available for you for the, uh, for the final exam. So the most important thing I just told you is 20th of April, your exam will be available for the whole day of 20th of April and you can take your exam anytime you like during that day but if the deadline has passed if it's 21st April then you won't be able to take your exam and I don't think there is there is any way of going back unless and until you have a proof or you have an emergency and you have a proof for that that this is why you couldn't appear for the final exam but yeah just make sure that you you take your exam and you are free to use Visual Studio or any compiler during any C++ compiler during the final exam because you are going to write the code, right? So you need to write the code in something. It can be an online compiler, it can be a Visual Studio compiler, it can be any any C++ compiler that you have installed on your system. Um, you can use that because it's all about code. I'm going to give you situations. I'm going to show you that in a while, some questions. And you have to solve them, right? So make sure you have everything set up and ready. Uh, before you actually start your exam so that's for your date of your final exam let me quickly now go through our sample final exam and show you what type of questions you say you should expect from the final exam so uh, this is how your exam would look like I mean I have to add some instructions over here since this is a sample exam I have not added any instructions to it but you will see uh, a big paragraph over here for the instructions please read those instructions very very carefully uh, and uh, 
then begin your exam over here all right so please read them very carefully and then begin exam um, your time will not start unless and until you press the begin button <clears throat> so the time you are taking to read the instructions is just a bonus time uh, it's not counted in 100 minutes but as soon as you uh, press the begin button your 100 minutes will start so as mentioned over here it's 1 hour and 40 minutes which is 100 minutes and if if you do not save your questions and uh, 100 minutes are over those questions which are automatically saved they will be submitted for you uh, on your behalf automatically so make sure you submit make sure you complete your exam and you submit all right don't leave without without clicking save and submit all right and obviously don't don't worry about this date it's a it's a sample exam so don't worry about this date right now so, but in your final exam you will have the correct date over here and and the due date current due date will be there for you so let me quickly begin the exam for you and um, this exam is divided into two parts um, but they are not separated inside the exam itself you will, all the questions are in one section but uh, there are there are two types of questions that you will see in this exam one question is uh, one type of questions is uh, the short questions uh, these questions will be given to you uh, in this format these questions will be in this format where you will be given some code and you have to fix an error in that code for example if that code has an error you you have to fix that error and you have to paste the new code over here and then uh, you move to the next question so uh, let me solve this uh, so there are as, as I said there are two types of questions this is the first type of question which I just showed you and there are another type of questions where uh, where you have to where you have to write the code so instructions are given just like what we did in our lab exercises and assignments so the instructions will be given to you and you have to write your code over here right obviously you will write code in your uh, compiler on your computer maybe visual studio or whatever online compiler you are using uh, but once you you are done over there you copy paste your code over here right and same for this so as i said there are two types of questions so this small short questions uh, which are over here i'm going to solve them for you all of them so these short questions there are of they are of two marks so each short question is of two marks so we have 10 short questions over here each of that question is two marks so you have 20 marks for your short questions so all of these questions so 10 10 questions over here 10 short questions each of them they are two marks so you have 20 marks for short questions then we have these programming questions uh, each of them uh, there are four programming questions and each of them is five marks so you have 20 marks for programming questions four of them and 20 marks for the short question there are 10 of them all right so 40 40 marks in total for your final exam so let's get started let's see how exam looks like and let's quickly solve it right so I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail because I don't I don't intend to make this video very long but at least you can see the questions and you can try to solve them yourself so what we have over here is the function below is intended to calculate the average of numbers in an array and return that average fix the function below to calculate and return average of the numbers. so basically an array will be passed to this function and that array contains some numbers inside it maybe five five elements in an array and you pa pass five over here if the size of the array is five and you have to calculate this function is calculating the average of the array so you have to add each of the element and divide uh, that sum with the total size of the array right and that would return the average of that array i'm not going to fix it uh, i'm sure you guys know how to do it you just have to create in sum over here just wanted to give you a feel of how a final exam looks like uh, but i think it's a good idea if you can try to solve this exam yourself it will give you a lot of practice so i'm not going to solve it i'm just going to explain it how to do it because writing code right now it will make me uh, it will make this video unnecessarily very long so i don't want to do that so what you have to do over here you just have to create maybe a variable int sum starting from zero and then sum is equal to uh, my array of i plus sum and once you have sum of all you come over here and take that sum divide that by size so basically this thing is not required over here and it, i is not required and there is a variable sum missing over here so these couple of things are missing over here once you have got the average and maybe average variable is also missing over here so you create an int average int sum here sum is equal to my array of i plus um, sum and once you have the sum of all of them 
uh, you do you do sum divided by uh, the size of this array and that will be saved in an average and you return average right so there are multiple ways of doing it this is one way which i told you so you solve that maybe write that in a compiler and then copy paste the correct code so i'm assuming this is the correct code i will i will just paste it over here so this would be my answer obviously i just copy paste this one but you will copy paste the right code over here so this is question number one question number two is the below program is expected to sum two numbers but the result of the below written program is not accurate as per the mathematical calculation fix the program below to make sure the result uh, result is accurate this is pretty simple so basically what is happening over here is i am adding this program is in fact not not wrong except few things that we need to change here so there is a number number one which has 5.5 .5 value number two which is 4.5 value and int result which is storing the result of addition of these two numbers and when i display this what this uh, addition is going to show me is 9 right but it should show me 10 right 5.5 .5 plus 4.5 is equal to 10 but this would show me uh, 9 so it will say 5 uh, addition of 5 and 4 is 9 instead it should be addition of 5.5 .5 and 4.5 is 10 now what i have to change in the code to make this work is change this to float change this to float change this to float right and double or float whatever you like so if i change these three to float uh, it's just going to calculate the right uh, make co it's going to make the right calculation for me and that's pretty much it so this is this is pretty simple next one is the program below is expected to add now it's the same question obviously uh, so it's a, it's the same question as this because i've created a very small pool of questions for the sample exam but in, in your case obviously you will have a large pool of questions where every question will be different for you but for for me a uh, question questions appearing over here they are repeating themselves because i have a very small pool of questions for this sample exam so don't worry if if you see repeating questions in this sample exam don't worry about that in your case obviously as i said you will have a bigger pool of questions so different students will be getting different questions and um, you won't be having any repeating questions so yeah forget about this for now so this is a new question identify the errors in the program below and fix it so there is there seems to be an error in this program that we need to fix it so if you see uh, you are free to copy paste this in your compiler and uh, obviously compiler will tell you what errors are but you need to fix it yourself so if you say there is no uh, using namespace std over here uh, i am using separately std over here if you don't want to use using namespace std over here you just add std colon colon with c out which already is here and you then you add wherever there is a c out add std colon colon there and wherever there is an endl put uh, std colon colon and endl over there as well so this will fix this problem I don't think there is any any more errors here uh, yeah this this is this is pretty much it so you need to fix this obviously you need to fix it and copy paste your code over here don't forget to copy paste your code over here uh, it happens sometimes that you fix everything you write down everything in your compiler but you don't copy paste your code over here which is a big mistake because then your I don't know you have fixed it or not right so you have to copy paste your answer over here all right in in the text box here okay the next question is the program below is expected to extract the word university from the string str uh, write down the missing line of code to perform this operation so there is a line of code missing this is the line of code that is missing so i have to uh, complete this code by writing a line of code over here so i have to extract from university of the fraser valley i have to extract the word university so what i can do is i can use uh, substring if you remember uh, so it's something like this sub str and then I can I can just uh, start from 0 and I can go up till I think 10 these are 10 words maybe so yeah so starting point and how many how many characters do you need if you do this it will return you a string which can be maybe string result so you can do something like this string result and it will store this uh, value which is university in this case in result and I'm just see uh, displaying that result over here so you have to write the whole code so you copy paste the whole code after fixing it and write it over here right so after completing this line also you have to 
complete this line also and copy paste the code over here so the correct one that is working so paste it over here so this is this was pretty simple one line of code that you have to write so you can see that these are pretty simple ones that you have to it doesn't take too much time from you hopefully it's not taking too much time at least this one it will take maybe one or two minutes not more than that even for the previous question uh, it it will it would take less than one minute maybe one or two minutes maximum to find out what the problem is if you copy paste this in the compiler it will tell you straight away this is two three minutes again very quickly just as i have to replace into float very simple one uh, and so on right um so these are short questions that's why they are called short questions because they are very very short and you can find their answers very quickly okay so uh, the flow of, uh, okay this is again repeating question i uh, already told you the solution to this one so you know how to do it so you have to create some variables and find the average okay what is this again this is the same repeating question as i told you i have a very small pool of questions from my sample exam and that's why i have repeating questions so what what do we have here the program below tests if the marks are greater than or equal to 60 if marks are greater than or equal to 60 then message you passed is displayed else you failed is displayed write down the two missing line of code so there are two missing line of codes so you can see there is a missing line here and the missing line code here so you have to fill these lines and copy paste this whole code over here so basically you have to check if the marks are greater than or equal to 60 if they are greater than or equal to 60 uh, it should display this if not you have to display this so basically in this line you have to write something like this it's pretty simple marks greater than and equal to greater than or equal to 60 than this and whatever is inside is already written here so and then the other missing line is this one it's it's the simplest one you just need to write else here that's it so this solved this question very very easy right so this is how you solve this one but again as i'm telling you you have to write the whole code corrected code don't don't write only the missing lines for me do not do that please write the whole code for me um, in fact what to you don't have to write you just copy paste this one in the compiler and replace this one with if and replace this this line with else and it will fix and copy paste everything to your back this is the same question i just uh, told you uh, then we have the program below is expected to and this is the same question as i solved it for you so this is uh, this is how the questions are i mean short questions are 10 of them and each one has 20 marks so 20 marks here uh, i expect everybody to get 20 marks because they are not very difficult questions and the level of difficulty of questions would be somewhat similar to what i showed you over here uh, maybe a little bit easier maybe a little bit harder but uh, very close to what i have shown you over here so if you know if you if you were able to solve this before i solved it for you before i told you in this video then you are you are good to go at least with these questions all right so we are done with these 10 questions then we have these programming questions that you have to solve and obviously i'm not going to write a code for you i have already written the code for you and i'm going to just show you so what you have to do in this question is write a c++ program that takes a string from the user as an input and then reverses that string using the rever reverse fun uh, recursive function in order to complete this function following should be true a separate recursive function should be created uh, to reverse a string and input as a string input should be taken from the main method uh, the string should be passed to the recursive function using reference so there is a, this is a pointer right a string have having spaces should still be reversed all right so if you use cn this program is not going to work right since you are going to take uh, input from the user and normally we take input from the user using cn but in this case you use get line because if you pray if you if you're using cn and you type hello world uh, then it will take only hello it will not take word if you remember we did an exercise on this as well so i'm going to quickly show you the key to this one um, uh, this one so this is how this function look like and this is how the whole code looks like it's only 10 12 lines of code no, not too much so this is the answer to this one i'm not going to explain please have a look at this uh, i'm just quickly going to tell you what actually we are doing so basically we are passing to this function so separate function for reverse so this is the first requirement need to create a separate recursive function it has to be recursive which means that this function should be calling itself if you see this function is calling itself from here 
and it should be using references so string should be taken in the main method so I have taken the string from the user in the main method and I have passed that um, as a as a reference so I have passed this here and I have taken the address of this string here over here and uh, yeah that's pretty much it into it and it should should display so since I'm using get line instead of C in it will take hello world as one string instead of taking hello only out of hello world so this is one of the questions okay so next we have is uh, this question okay this question uh, write C++ program that takes an, an array of three integers you are free to hard code this array okay the program also takes an in, integer input from the users and saves it in a variable called iteration the program runs these many iterations to do the following take each number each element of the array and checks to see if it is divisible by 5 if it is divisible by 5 then the program adds 5 to that integer however if the number is not divisible by 5 it subtracts 5 from that finally the program displays the final state of the array make sure you create a separate function to do the calculation make sure you create a separate function to display the array make sure you do not create a new array to hold the calculation then I have this here somewhere I just created that uh, so this is the question so basically um, you have to take an array of three integers so I've just hard coded this array and I have taken one variable I have uh, called this in it iteration as per the questions question requirement and it will take this input from the user how many times do I want to take this iteration so I've taken this input and then I've created a variable uh, I've created a uh, function calculation because it says you have to create a separate function for, for calculation so I have done that and I have passed my array to this function and I have passed this iteration variable for example if we have taken 3 here I have passed this 3 as well so it will go to calculation what it does is it will keep on running so in this case if iteration variable is 3 it will run for 3 times and what it does is it will check each element of the array so it will take for example array uh, first element of the array which is 10 it will check if it is divisible by 5 yes it is completely divisible by 5 so it will add 5 to it so 10 will become 15 if it and then it will take the next variable if it is divisible completely by 5 it is not completely divisible by 5 so it will subtract 5 from this number so this will become 21 similarly it checks 77 it is not completely divisible by 5 so it will subtract 5 from it so it will become 72 now so my next array my new array now is uh, 15 21 and 72 so it will iterate again since I said it should iterate three times since I took this from user it will do it again do the calculation again do the calculation again so it will run three times and finally it will display me the array since it says I have to have a separate function to display so I do not put my for loop inside to display here so I created a separate function uh, which contains a for loop and it displays the final state of the array which would be I don't know something something like maybe 30 or I don't know 25 something like that I don't know so this is this is another question so this is a simple code you have it's not a very lengthy program so you sh should not take more than 10 minutes maximum 15 minutes to you maybe 10 minutes to write the previous one maybe 15 minutes so 30 minutes I, I'm, I'm just being very optimist I'm just taking I'm adding some cushion to it as well it should take maybe 10 minutes but let's say you, you've taken 15 minutes to complete this maybe 15 minutes to complete this should not be but uh, let's assume and since there are four of them um, you should take maybe uh, maybe uh, I guess 60 minutes not 60 maybe less than 60 maybe 50 minutes even if you take 50 60 minutes then you are left with 40 minutes and those 40 minutes you can spend on your uh, your short questions so quite comfortably I, I guess you should be able to complete this anyways let's move to the next one next question is uh, I took this from your book because it's just a sample exam so I just wanted to take it from your book and show so uh, an integer is said to be a perfect number if the number of its uh, devices including one but not the number itself is equal to number for example 6 is a perfect number because all its divisible plus 1 uh, is equal to 6 itself right so it, that that is called a, a, a perfect number right so you just need to calculate a perfect number by creating a separate function I guess I have it over here yeah 
so just have a look at this i'm not going to explain it uh, just have a look at this and uh, yeah so this is how you write a perfect number and uh, uh what i want to do is i just want to uh, since i'm not going to provide you this one because it's uh, or i can upload this for you no problem so what i can do is i can upload this document for you which contains the code for sample exam so you can use that if you want to have a look okay so this is this one next one is write a c++ program that displays uh, numbers that are prime and odd from 0 to 50 so all the numbers that are prime and that are also odd at the same time your program should have at least three functions is prime function which will calculate obviously the prime numbers and it should return the boolean value uh, is odd number that should return boolean value to show if it's an odd number or not and display for displaying yeah so I think I have this one at the top so yeah so this is what you have to do so three functions first function will return prime we did we did a lab exercise on this exactly same function nothing difficult uh, same function I think to calculate the odd number I think we did this in one of the exercises and just created a separate display function which will check if uh, if a number uh, if the number is from one, 0 to 50 if that number is even and at the same time uh, if a number is prime and at the same time it's odd then display that number otherwise don't display that number and I'll just call this display method inside the main method it's pretty simple one um, this question at least was quite simple so yeah I just wanted to give a mix of all these questions so you can see that there are very very easy questions also there are some questions which are a bit bit difficult and some of them are a little bit more difficult uh, but if you do practice obviously it's not going to be much difficult uh, honestly if you ask me all of these questions are pretty easy uh, at a difficulty level of 0 to 10 if where 10 is the most difficult one I will rate all of them to less than 5 they are not that difficult I guess but again for me it's not difficult maybe for you it is difficult so you should practice better so this is how your final exam is going to look like and don't forget to save and submit your exam for me since I did not uh, write the uh, answers it's just displaying me the message you have not answered and then it will tell you how much time it took so and then you press ok and then obviously all of these questions they need grading so you should wait for me to grade your exams only then you will be able to get your marks so that's pretty much it guys uh, I hope uh, the sample exam has given you some idea of how the exam questions would look like um, the level of difficulty of questions as I said that they are going to be very similar to what I have just shown you and I have uh, just uploaded for you the uh, sample uh, exam which I was just talking about so I have uploaded those questions for you just in case you were looking for them uh, so yeah so your final exam as far as uh, the uh, programming questions are concerned they are going to be very similar to what I have just shown you uh, and you know what to do you need to copy paste your code from your compiler into that text box which I have uh, shown you during the sample exam as well so make sure you copy paste the code properly make sure you copy paste the whole code over there uh, not just one or two lines just make sure to review your code as well once you have copy pasted that code just to make sure that you have copy pasted everything over there uh, because sometimes it does happen as I said uh, some students do believe that they have pasted, uh, they have done everything, but they just forget to paste it. Or sometimes they have just pasted portion of the code and not the whole code. For me, I have to mark your exams. I need to see the whole code. Only then I'll be able to mark them. So that's how you can, uh, how you can get good marks. Uh, just to make sure that your code is correct. Just make sure that you copy paste the whole code and so on so that's pretty much it guys i think i need to stop it over here i won't uh, take too much time uh, if you have any questions regarding anything uh, any concept that is not making sense to you any concept that is still confusing you we still have time for our final exam uh, we still have a couple of weeks i guess uh, uh, next week obviously uh, there is going to be no classes because uh, before exam obviously we don't have classes so uh, you will have good time to prepare for your exam and at, at any time if you have any difficulty in any concept you can just get back to me and uh, we can discuss over it so 
that's pretty much it guys make sure you do good in your final projects as well as i said that some of the students have not submitted their projects yet so i i will expect that they will submit by the end of the day today monday april 5th uh if if you do it today then you, you will not lose any marks but if i don't get it by today then you will start losing marks and uh tuesday april 6th as i showed as i have shown you the schedule as well you have your presentation don't don't forget to appear for your presentations because they have marks and we don't want to lose too many marks right so wish you all the very best for your final exam wish you all the very best for your final project as well do good guys take stay safe bye bye